Well, Donna, in 2007, a settlement was reached that saw most survivors of residential schools qualify for payments out of a $3 billion compensation fund. But a few years after that, in 2012, two BC First Nations, including the First Nations in Kamloops, said that residential schools did not harm just individuals. The residential school system harmed entire communities. And so they sued and were soon joined in a class action lawsuit by other First Nations, now numbering 105 from across the country. Their common argument, the residential school system ultimately affected the entire community's ability to perpetuate their culture, perpetuate their language, or to do things like properly defend land claims. And the federal government ought to pay for that harm. How do you govern a community where nearly your entire population has had their children forcibly removed, not over one generation, but over several generations. And there's the disconnection from their language and their culture and their all of this. How do you address that? I mean, this is this is horrific. In court filings, the federal government acknowledges that, yes, residential schools were harmful and wrong. But as a matter of law, Canada did not commit any unlawful act that could be said to have harmed the bans. And in any event, the government says the harm suffered by First Nations over a century or more was a result of a whole host of other cultural, social, and economic factors. The parties have differing views on who is legally responsible to compensate for any harms caused by or through the creation of these schools. Now, some advocates and some parliamentarians say that the federal government ought to get out of court and sit down and negotiate these claims as part of the reconciliation process. No word today if, in fact, that is the plan for the Trudeau government. But in the meantime, these First Nations are preparing to go to trial, likely in the fall of 2022. Donna? All right, David Aiken in Ottawa, thank you.